Good day everyone. So today I'll be presenting my NUS ISS Master of Technology Capstone project where I developed an end-to-end -end solution using genetic algorithm and bird sentiments from tweets for a hybrid approach to portfolio optimization. In plain English, it means that I'll show how we could use traditional portfolio methods and add on considerations of opinions from tweets and actually increase our cumulative returns and minimize our volatility for your investment portfolio. And I will package everything into a simple web-based application. For this presentation, I will assume that you have some basic investment background and basic idea of various machine learning algorithms, so I'll not go into details for this. First off, a little bit about myself. I'm Evan, a principal engineer at Defense Science and Technology Agency, DSTA, and a recent graduate of the Master of Technology program in Intelligent Systems in NUS ISS. You could find some of my work at the link here, including the robo-advisor that, that I'm presenting today. I'm sure many of you would have heard of this term, robo-advisors, especially in the last couple of years. But okay, what are robo-advisors? Well, in a nutshell, they are basically platforms that provide automated and algorithm-driven financial planning services. As the word robo suggests, there is often little or no human supervision. If you invest the traditional way, say through a bank, there's an investment manager handling your account and advising you on how to invest based on his or her understanding of your financial goals and risk appetite. Robo advisors basically try to re replace the human investment manager. They come in many forms, but generally what happens is that you sign up on an online platform, input your goals and risk appetite, and using some fancy algorithms, the robot advisor will recommend an investment portfolio for you. If you are happy with the suggestions, you can invest directly through them. You can also monitor your portfolio online with robot advisors and rebalance your portfolio whenever you need to. And why are we interested in them? In recent years, it is gaining a lot of popularity, and almost every bank and finance company has come up with their own robot advisor. It is becoming very popular because it enables small investors to gain entry to low-cost wealth management with low minimum investment requirements. That is actually automated and diversified, as they usually invest in exchange-traded funds, otherwise known as ETFs. In addition, each of these robo-advisors also often boosts both of some fancy AI algorithm that will give you superior performance. Another advantage of robo-advisors is that they are less vulnerable to potential conflicts of interest. This is because they provide more transparent and significantly lower cost structures compared to human financial advisors who are often prone to misguided incentive-based commission schemes. That is to say, they might just recommend something that is not in your best interest just to earn extra commissions for themselves. In summary, it's cheaper than traditionally act actively managed investments while promising to give as good or even better performance. Next, we move on to the current state of robo-advisors. In reality, many robo-advisors are basically just serving out previously human-managed portfolios, but in a new digital form. They might still be using simple, predefined risk-allocated portfolios and constant rebalancing rules. And there will still be humans, basically the investment managers, to oversee investment algorithms and rule sets. This is to ensure that they can intervene if things do not make sense. Hence, there is great opportunity to leverage machine learning to create better portfolios. And as many of us know, trading in the short term is also driven by popular sentiments. So we could use sentiment analysis to also create more reactive portfolios. Of course, using machine learning is not new, and many people and companies have already done a lot of work on it. Most of the recent research articles utilize deep learning and optimize asset selection and asset allocation together. This makes it difficult for investors to know exactly what they're holding and why the algorithm is making the decisions. When profits are good, everyone is happy and no questions are asked. However, when there are losses, we will often need to explain to clients why or how the model is working, what ETFs or assets are they currently invested in. The previous two slides are captured in the black box above, where clients might be unsure what exactly they are holding, and it is difficult to explain why is the model doing this or that. 
In addition, currently most inputs to models are stock market data, and some will include technical and fundamental indicators as features into their models. All these are great in knowing if the stock is good or not theoretically, and should serve well for the medium to long term. But oftentimes, there are spikes or dips that is purely due to the public perception, misguided or not, of how the stock is going to fare short term. And if we do not take this into account, we are missing out on the opportunity to maximize our returns and minimize our losses. So in developing our solution, we came up with three main criteria that it must have. It should be number one, transparent, number two, simple, and number three, adaptive to market sentiments. I'll give an example of how this could work. In terms of transparency, one way to let clients know what they are holding is obviously to decouple asset selection and asset allocation and fix the assets in the portfolios that they choose. Asset selection means which companies should I consider? Asset allocation means for each of these companies, how much percentage of my money should I invest in? This is very common in traditional portfolios offered by investment companies and we will choose this method as well. Now, most robo-advisors in the market actually use traditional methods such as constant rebalancing, CRB, mean variance optimization, MVO, and hierarchical risk parity, HRP. And the fund managers are also trained and very familiar with these methods. So we will actually use these as the backbone, that is to say, the starting point from which we will base our approach on. In addition, by using sentiments from Twitter, we can potentially gain insight into how the public might trade in the short term in response to certain events and news. Now, I'll dive into more details for each of these. I'll start with asset selection. I considered two forms of portfolio diversification, namely sector-based diversification and asset class diversification. For sector-based, I'll just use the 11 SPDR sector ETFs, which is very convenient because they are basically the ETFs of S&P 500 stocks grouped by their GICS sector classification. I should also mention here that for this project, I'm considering the US stock market. For asset class diversification, I'll use Ray Dilio's simplified all-weather portfolio, which is a constant percentage mix in asset allocation. In this, basically, we divide our portfolio into equality, commodity, and bonds as shown in the figure. So we can see that it's actually 30% stocks, 40% long-term bonds, 15% intermediate-term bonds, 7.5% gold, and 75 in other commodities. To optimize our asset allocation, the basic idea is to take the output from traditional methods and also take Twitter sentiments into account by passing them into some kind of modification function. From there, we can get our output, which we can optimize, such that we maximize whatever KPI we are interested in, such as cumulative gains. For traditional methods, I will consider a constant rebalanced portfolio, that is to rebalance based on constant predetermined allocation percentage. For MVO, basically we optimize such that the allocation is sitting on the efficient frontier to attain maximum Sharpie ratio. Now, we need to convert tweets into sentiments, actually specifically finance-related tweets. Two algorithms that I could find were Vader, which is specifically for social media, and Finberg, which is specifically for finance-related text. You can read more about the details for Vader and Berg in the links below. I will not go into details because each of these could easily take 15 to 30 minutes to explain. Obviously, our algorithm must have certain performance goals. It should perform as good as or better than a benchmark, in this case, S&P 500, otherwise known as SPY, for the following KPIs, cumulative returns, annualized returns, etc. All of the previous slides come together to form the system architecture for the backend in a so-called hybrid approach. This is quite generic and actually all the orange boxes, which I call decision points, can be easily replaced with more complicated or simpler functions and algorithms as required. Most of the blocks are already discussed in the previous slides and here I will focus on the optimization using genetic algorithm. 
Again here, I'm not going into details of what is genetic algorithm and how it works. You can just refer to the link below. GA optimization is performed based on different objectives, F, such as maximum cumulative returns, maximum Sharpie ratio, and minimum fertility. Multiple runs are performed for each permutation of decision points in the figure. There are obviously many ways to do this, given that there are so many decision points. I could choose different starting assets and use different traditional approaches and different modification functions and also different tweets to get my sentiments from. Django was chosen as the web development framework to build the robo-advisor, as it is one of the most popular free open source web development tools, has a short learning curve and is catered for rapid development. For this application, we will need at minimum a sign up and login page, a home page, some pages to manage our, your portfolio, and of course to add or withdraw funds. So basically, at fixed periodic intervals, example one day or one week or even one month, we could trigger our Jupyter notebook. This is basically the entire backend from the previous slide to get data and optimize our models. And then it will update our spreadsheet and other files for the front end. And the front end will then basically take that info and display or calculate it in the portfolio page. Of course, it will have its own database, the Django database, to manage each user's portfolio and user details. As mentioned previously, there are many decision points and many permutations for them. There is a challenge that, given each permutation of decision points, I would need to run my algorithms for a large number of times for a genetic algorithm. Therefore, we need to actually reduce this number of decision points because of time constraints. In terms of asset selection, for sector-based diversification and asset class diversification, I perform traditional optimization techniques so to see which is more sensitive to optimization. You will found that asset class-based diversification worked better for my case. In terms of tweet selection, it will be too time-consuming to generate tweets from many user accounts and then dump into a model. Instead, I considered a number of Twitter accounts and performed person correlation with day shifts to gauge whether specific Twitter accounts had strong correlation with the overall market index. For sentiment analysis, I performed both Feinberg and Vader transformation on selected tweets, and using a sample of these, I found that Vader tended to give neutral sentiments for tweets that were, to a human, obviously positive or negative. Therefore, Finbert was chosen. With this, I proposed two models. For what I call SAW, so it's basically adding sentiments to a constant rebalanced all-weather portfolio. So I will use a simple delta based on the moving average of sentiments over different periods, MACD, and use the crossover to gauge the delta weight to add to the portfolio. For SMPT, I'll use the volatility calculated from MPT as a starting point and add an adjustment factor to get adjusted volatility and then get the adjusted weights for the portfolio. I train my models based on a period from August 2018 to December 2019. <clears throat> and tested it on data from January 2020 to April 2020. This allowed the training data to have one crash in December 2018 and for the test data to also have a crash, a much bigger one actually, in early February 2020 due to the COVID-19. For the SOAR portfolio, I ran my algorithm for multiple runs for different objectives and different population size, number of generations, etc. All models could beat the index, and most of the SOAR GA models were able to beat the vanilla or weather portfolio. For the SMPT portfolio, I also ran my algorithm for multiple runs, similarly for different objectives, for different population size, number of generations, etc. All models could beat the index, however, they were very similar in performance, and in fact, fared worse than the original all weather portfolio during the testing period, and only slightly better for the entire period. In summary, it was found that in general, traditional optimization methods plus bird sentiments perform better than traditional optimization methods on their own. Okay, now, finally a demo of the system. First, I will log in as Bob. We go to the portfolio page. At the top is the account summary, how much the account is worth, 
how much money have you transferred in, how much earnings you have, etc. This is fairly standard, and most platforms will have something similar showing the basic stuff for your investments. On the right, we have a graph showing how the portfolio varies with time. Here you can, we can see the buy transactions and sell transactions denoted, denoted by B and S and how each investment is doing. Scrolling down, we can see our current portfolios. Bob is holding onto the SAW portfolio and the Berlina all-weather portfolio. A summary of his value and earnings are also shown. Okay, so let's say he wants to make additional investments today. Being a typical investor, he wants something that can make the most money. So he sorts it by the last 30 days column. The SAW portfolio is at the top, so he clicks details. The system compares this portfolio with suitable benchmarks. Here, the buy and hold SPY is, is basically if you buy the S&P 500 index ETF and just hold it. We can see that the performance was fairly similar in a sense until the market crash in February. And then you can see that the all-weather portfolio was actually quite resilient and in April still managed a gain of 15% compared to the index which lost 10%. And because we optimized the all-weather portfolio for SAW, taking sentiments into account and dynamically adjusting our portfolio allocation, the gains actually doubled to around 30%. For those that prefer numbers, we can see the key performance statistics in the table below. SAW managed to maximize our cumulative returns while actually having relatively low volatility. So of course the Sharpie ratio is pretty high. So okay, let's say Bob is now convinced that this portfolio is the best choice, so he can proceed to buy it. Let's say 10,000 to so. So you have purchased these on the stock market. Of course for this prototype, it's not linked to any real system, but for an actual robot advisor, this will mean that you will execute trades on your behalf. Instead of 10,000, it bought only 9,000 plus. This is because stocks would need to be bought in whole lots, so it is impossible to get exact investor amounts. And now you can see that in the summary, there is a new buy transaction, and the account asset transfers, earnings, etc. have also been updated. So, okay, that's all for the demo. So you may ask, what's so special about this? compared to what other robot advisors are doing. Everyone else seems to go full deep learning, which looks very good on paper, but sometimes not so good for practical use. In our case, we chose a hybrid approach that is more transparent, simple to understand and explain and is adaptive. With our backend architecture, it will also be easy to create more complicated models if necessary. Now, just some additional information that you might be interested in. In terms of implementation, these were the selection of tools that were used for the front end and back end. In terms of issues and challenges, the main challenge in this case was the tight timeline to build an end to end system. The approaches to portfolio optimization are very wide and is still an ongoing research topic and problem. It was also very difficult to compare the different approaches to journal papers. This was because the data sets were different. Some considered the US stock market, some were interested in the China stock market and or in cryptocurrency, and there was no common benchmarks amongst them to compare their effectiveness against each other. There were also very few existing code implementations. Those that were available on GitHub were also often incomplete. For example, the scripts were meant specifically for their pre-processed dataset, but the pre-processing script is not given. Also, many approaches were experimental and not really meant for actual deployment. And that's all I have. For anything else, you can just contact me at the email here. Thank you and hope you enjoyed the presentation.